everyone, I'm Kinkas, I'm a synth DIY guy. I decided to do something different today. We're outside in my backyard, beautiful sunny day in Mexico City today. So, Also, I thought it'd be a nice change to actually be on camera for once, talking and showing stuff. I bought this little dry erase board so I can be like a teacher. Anyway, I'm going to talk about music today using modular to make certain kinds of music and the theme of today is microtones so what does a microtone mean well a microtone is a smaller interval than a half step okay so if you don't know any music theory at all that's not gonna ring a bell so let me explain a little bit of how we in the West do music 99% of the time, like 100% uh, of what you hear in the radio in the Western world conforms to one particular tuning system that was devised about 300 years ago, back in the Baroque era. Uh, Bach was a pioneer of this system, and it's a division of the octave in 12 notes. What is an octave? Well, an octave is just a doubling of the frequency, and we as humans identify that new note that's twice the frequency of the original as the same note only higher right so for example let's make a line here which represents the pitch continuum pitch continuum kinkas what do you mean what i mean by the pitch continuum is the infinite fluid sweep from one octave to the next so like with my voice for example i can do it did you identify any discrete notes there? No, it's a fluid continuum. There are infinite notes there. It's analog, not digital. So same with your oscillator. If you just grab that pitch knob and turn it, you get fluid sweep, right? Uh, with a ribbon controller, with a theremin controller, with a optical controller, most of those, if they don't go through a quantizer, they're just going to give you a fluid variation of pitch that does not conform to any discrete uh, systems of separation of notes. But here in the West, after thousands of years of evolution, about 300 years ago, we came up with a system that divides the octave in 12 notes and that's what we use for everything in the western world why do i say western world because in india many places in africa many places in asia many places in eastern europe have different tuning systems and for them that's their normal tuning system for us that's different than our standard which actually gave rise to the term zen harmonic which is almost interchangeable with microtonal. So Zen harmonic means that it doesn't conform to our normal standard traditional Western scale. That's all the term means. Different harmony. All of microtonality is considered Zen harmonic. Playing freely within the pitch continuum is considered can be considered microtonal. So you don't use any sort of system at all. You just play around inside the pitch continuum without trying to hit specific discrete notes, which is what a lot of modular people do with their ribbon controllers and whatnot, making bleeps and bloops that are not discrete notes. That can be considered microtonal music. Just intonation, which is based on the physical properties of sound and vibration. So when you play a string, and you find, uh, you play the harmonics that naturally occur at different divisions of that string and derive a scale from that, that is just intonation, which is actually more consonant and harmonic than our system. So some people think microtonality necessarily sounds out of tune, but sometimes it sounds more in tune than our system. Our system is a little bit up tune because it's a compromise so that we can be able to use one instrument to play in any key, have different keys in the same piece, modulate, uh, transpose, etc. So the, using a system that has equal an equal division means any note can be the center because there are all the relationships between each successive note are exactly the same. If you use just intonation, you pretty much have to stick to your key. You can't modulate unless you change instruments or retune your instrument. So what is the system we use here? Well, we divide the octave in 12 notes. So, uh, did I do it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, this is called 12 Edo. 
Edo means equal division of the octave. Another term used is 12 tet. So if you see those terms, you can now sound very smart because you know what they mean, right? 12 tet means 12 tone equal temperament, right? So a temperament is a tuning. An equal temperament means a tuning where the octave is divided by a certain number of equidistant notes, right? And we use 12 because that's the closest to the scales that we had arrived at uh, from observing nature originally. So somebody figured out that you can temper some of those notes a little bit up, a little bit down, and get uh, 12 notes equally divided that are close enough to where our ears can kind of get used to that and it'll sound in tune. It's a compromise in order to get chromaticism, uh, transposition, and modulation, which are very important aspects of music today. Some instruments are stuck to this system, like a piano, an organ, a guitar if you play it with the frets, not a slide. A saxophone has its keys already predetermined to fit the 12 tet scale. So many, many Western instruments are pretty much stuck in the 12 tet system. Some are not, like string instruments that are not fretted, like violins, cellos, basses, etc. You can pretty much play any note in between the normal notes. So they're great instruments for microtonalism. Uh, of course, you have to develop your ear to really hear those microtones on these instruments because there's no indication and there's no way to be sure that you're actually hitting the right microtones unless you have trained yourself to, to hear them the same way that one trains themselves to hear and perform uh, in tune within 12 tet. Like it's something that takes years for a violinist, for example, to be able to play accurately in tune. Other instruments that are good for microtones are like the trombone, for example, the slide trombone. And you can bend a string on a guitar, for example. You can prepare a piano. You can change gauges of strings and have it professionally tuned to a different scale. You can use slide on a guitar. You can just tune the guitar differently. You can have frets placed with different spacings on a guitar. So there are, there are many, many ways to make microtonal music. Now, the easiest is using electronic means like a modular synthesizer. In fact, the modular out of the box won't conform to any particular tuning system. You have to tell it, you have to use a quantizer or a quantized sequencer or controller in order to tame the beast to stay within the Western system. Otherwise, it's just crazy madness uh, free in the pitch continuum. That's one approach, the approach that I really like is to just be free. Just forget about this division and play whatever pitch, whatever frequency that either happens randomly, if I'm using random voltage generators, or I arrive at using some kind of linear controller like a joystick or a ribbon or a theremin or something like that. Another approach is to divide the octave in different numbers. So you can divide the octave in 22, you can divide it by 43, you can divide it by 72, like my teacher Joe Maneri did. Back 20 years ago when I was studying microtonalism at the New England Conservatory, Joe Maneri was teaching us a system that he called the virtual pitch continuum, which is basically just to divide the octave in small enough intervals that it's almost like having the entire pitch continuum uh, available to you. Like a twelfth of a step is such a small increment that for most people it won't even register as a different note. You will hear it as like a slight, light variation of the same note. This world of Zen harmony is huge. There's a program called Scala, which is like the de facto program to create microtonal scales. And there's a Scala archive with over 4,000 different tuning systems that people have created over the years. Some people, in fact, don't even consider themselves or act as composers or musicians. They're simply scale theorists. They're like math musicians that like to create and devise new tuning systems that composers and performers can then use to compose with. Most of the microtonal music made nowadays uh, sounds very bad and sterile because people are mostly using computer-generated sounds with pretty crappy sound libraries, sound fonts, 
because they're just testing out their, they want to hear that the, the intervals, the relationships, the harmony, they're not too concerned with the end result, which is why a lot of microtonal music sounds like crap, but a lot of it sounds pretty cool and interesting. Like if you listen to Ligeti or Zenakis or Harry Parch or from Mexico, Julian Carrillo, uh, even the improvisations of my teacher, Joe Maneri, were pretty much free floating into the pitch continuum. So there, there's a lot of microtonal music that's very impressive. Charles Ives used microtonality, for example. So there's a lot of really cool music that's been made for centuries that does not conform to our traditional scale. And again, the modular is perfect for that. So let's talk about some ways that we can do microtonal music in the modular. One of them is to use continuous controllers and just be free within it. Or to train your ear to really hear the microtones you're going after, really learn the scale, and use those continuous controllers consciously to hit that scale. Just the same way that we train ourselves to hear 12 tet, and if you play a violin, hit those notes correctly, you can do that with other tuning systems too. Or you can use a quantizer, like Ornament and Crime, for example, uh, has a lot of microtonal scales built in to the menu. So you can just choose a microtonal scale that you'd like to explore and uh, send your controller voltage into that and from there to the oscillator. And if your ornament and crime is well calibrated and your oscillators are well calibrated, then you can experiment uh, accurately with a particular microtonal scale. Another thing you can do is simply use an attenuator between your one volt per octave controller and your oscillators. What happens then? Well, we have a one volt per octave standard. What happens if we have, we attenuate the output of the controller and get something like half a volt per octave? Well, then you get 24 notes per octave. That's 24 Edo, also known as the quarter tone scale. Quarter tone scale is a good start because it gives you the standard 12 notes as well. So you can just skip every other note and you have the chromatic scale. But you also have the quarter tones available right there. So that's a good first approach to microtonalism is to try out the quarter tone scale, 24 Edo, 24 Tet, right? And what you do is just use a tuner and you use that attenuator to bring down the voltage of your controller so that it takes two full octaves to reach a volt, right? and then you have 24 Edo. But you can do the same for any division of the octave. You can have um, 15 Edo is pretty popular with the Zen harmonists. Uh, 22 Edo is very popular. 32, I think, 43 is one of Harry Parch's favorite ones. So just using a tuner and a passive attenuator can give you a precise scale or tuning system that is Edo based, meaning it's an equal division of the octave. Of course, there are many, many, many tuning systems that are not equal divisions of the octaves or that are subsets of equal divisions of the oct octave, meaning, for example, you have a division of 72, but you're not using all 72 notes. You choose your favorite 12 notes, for example, out of those 72 and compose using that. So that's uh, that's another possibility as well. But for that, then you'd probably want to use a computer-based program like Scala or Custom Scale Editor by HPy. And there are other, like Will Sonic on the iPad. The iPad, in fact, is a great uh, device to make a microtonal music with. There are lots of microtonally enabled apps and the touch screen is very conducive to that as well. Uh, Thumb Jam, Zeta, uh, Will Sonic, those are some apps that are microtonal friendly. There's a whole world of microtonalities and harmony happening uh, in the world right now that most people are not aware of. It's uh, kind of a nerdy niche, just like modular. Let's go back in the studio and I'm gonna show some of these concepts that I've been presenting here. And in the description of the video, I'm going to link to some composers to the Zen, Harmon Zen Harmonic Alliance group in Facebook, which is where most of the theorists, musicians, composers, arrangers that use microtonality uh, congregate and discuss nowadays. Really, in Facebook, strangely enough, it's not just kitties and politics on Facebook. You can get deep into academics and mathematics and things like that applied to music and scale theory. So let's go to the studio and check some of this stuff out practically. All right.
right, so what I've set up here is just a simple voice. The Micron module is a full synth voice. So just for expediency, I patched the key step into that. Uh, the pitch CV is going through my little pocket patch pal attenuator. Right now it's all the way up, so it's not attenuating at all. Gate is from the key step is directly into the gate input of the Micron. The output of the Micron going into the delay and the output of the delay into my hex mix mixer and from the mixer into my audio interface to get recorded. So this is what this sounds like now. So what I need to do is bring this octave down. This is zero CV right here, right? There's nothing lower than this. this what I gotta do because if I use a different octave, uh, changing the attenuator is gonna change the bottom note as well. I need the bottom note to stay solid. So let's see, I'm moving the attenuator and that bottom note doesn't change because it's zero volts. If you attenuate zero volts, you still get zero volts. Now here, this is two octaves, so this is probably close to two volts. So let's attenuate it. check there you go that sounds like a pretty close to an octave so we have a not one octave of oscillator but spanning two octaves of keyboard right this is a 24 tet scale or 24 ESO, also known as the quarter tone scale so let's hear what that sounds like As you can hear, the steps are smaller than usual. They're half the size of the usual step. Instead of being half steps, they are quarter steps. If I play the shape of a major scale, let's hear what that'll sound like. It sounds similar to the actual chromatic scale because uh, most of the intervals in the major scale are whole steps. So that means that now there's half steps. Now let's Play around, improvise a little bit, and see what happens. So uh, I will turn on the delay now. If I play the shape of the whole tone scale, then I'll get the chromatic scale. Too bad, right now I don't have anything uh, polyphonic set up because it'd be really cool to actually hear chords. This is fun. I will use the uh, the octave keys, and now they won't really be octaves. They're, they're like tritones, right? Which is half the octave. Cool. So I can make shapes and then uh, transpose tritones. Cool, so the octave switches in conjunction with the keys, making up for the fact that it's a small keyboard and that you only really get an octave in a little bit. Let's make a, a 22 note scale. 
what's that like? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 23, 22. So right here should be the octave, right? There you go. So now I have 22 Edo. Now we no longer have um, the traditional chromatic scale because this division is not divisible by 12. So now we're really getting into strange territory. There's an arpeggio of what would be a C minor chord. Here's a what would be a D minor chord. Obviously it's not a D minor chord because we are in a different tuning. I don't even know what to call this chord. My friends in the Zen Harmonic Alliance probably have a name for it. There it is, instant composition in 19 EDO. What else can we do? We can also control the micron. Instead of using 
the keyboard, you can use a continuous controller of some kind, which could be a ribbon. This is like the empirical microtonal approach. Let's try something with the joystick as a controller. And uh, I'm using the joystick uh, vertical axis to open the filter and the horizontal axis to change pitch, right? And that, so that actually allows me to use the joystick alone without any kind of trigger because I just close the filter all the way. Cool, there's an instant composition playing freely within the pitch continuum. Now the problem with this is I've been conditioned my whole life to hear music in 12 tet. So it's really difficult for me to avoid it, like to not do things that are consonant and somehow tonal. So as you can tell, this improvisation right now sounds less microtonal than when I was using the keyboard in some Edo. So that's what's cool about using a microtonal scale. It's, it's a way to guarantee that you're not gonna fall back into the traditional chromatic scale or the diatonic scales. What I did here to try to escape is just use glissandi, right? So I get a note and then move it slightly up and do another note, move it slightly down. So I'm never just sitting on any sort of consonants. So it's more glissando based piece. So that's a second way of doing microtones. Now the other way, the third way that I had mentioned will involve using the ornament and crime module. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause right now. I'm gonna use the ornament and crimes uh, auto cal feature, auto calibration feature to make it really, really precisely in tune with a couple of oscillators. So hang on for just a minute. And we'll have all four ornament crime outputs perfectly calibrated and matched to their respective oscillators. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the analog shift register, which is the first one, it's copy or machine. Right, and now we're gonna choose a scale now here's where we can have some fun because as you move forward now there you go quarter minor thirds uh scott but Scottish, here we go savish is actually a friend of mine the inventor of this he's a facebook friend of mine he's from the uh, zen harmonic alliance and he's uh he created this scale it's savish 12 on 31 Edo. So that's probably a subset of 12 notes off of 31 equal division of the octave. So why not? Let's uh, let's use the scale. Right? So now all I have to do is send any uh, like a sequencer or something. So we'll send the uh, the lizard 2 into CV input 1 of the ornament and crime. Another thing we need to do is connect the uh, the square, which is the clock output from my lizard as a sequencer into the trigger input right here. So let's go into the visualization. There we go. So it looks like most of all, this is kind of high. So let's bring some of the levels down. 
right? And we get that kind of shape right there. And that's it. So this is a sequence happening in four oscillators following Let's use this other mode here, which goes back and forth. So now what I can do is just play around with this sequencer and slowly change the sequence around. So minimalism, right? actually change my microtonal scale in real time too. This, there we go. 145 tet. <laughs> Magic in 145 tet. Yeah, the names of the microtonal scales are usually pretty cool too. Like, um, there's lots of magic scales. There's like, um, Mavilla, Porcupine. Um, there are terms like moments of symmetry and things like that, which are all Interesting. So let's hear what this one sounds like. The thing is, our ears are so used to 12 that it's likely that you you might think you're hearing in something in 12 because your brain is actually modifying so that you perceive modifying the pitches so that you perceive it as 12. That that can happen too. Let's change the scale again. There you go. Um, 22 Tet Orwell 11.9. Oh, here we go. Now this sounds more, more weird, right? Let's play around with the sequence a little more. So that's it for today's intro on microtonality and uh, I'll be sure to make more videos in this series with other approaches, ideas and more information about microtonal music using modular synthesizers. All right. Hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and if you're feeling extra generous, please join our Patreon account. Stay noisy.